We've got breaking news out of the NFL where Chris Jones has agreed to a five-year contract to stay in Kansas City. That's per multiple reports. The deal will reportedly pay Jones $95 million guaranteed. The most for any defensive tackle in NFL history. The All-Pro DT has been with KC since 2016, winning three Super Bowl titles with them. And he recorded 10 and a half sacks last season, the second most of any defensive tackle in the NFL. Jones is now locked up in Kansas City through the 2028 season. And with that, we bring in CBS Sports NFL analyst Brian McFadden, as well as DJ Doosable. And guys, I'm going to start with a defensive lineman, right? So, DJ, you go first. What's your reaction to Chris Jones getting this monster contract after maybe we thought we see the same thing go down like we saw last year? Chris, it's about time. I mean, we talked about Chris Jones missing the first week of this past season because he was waiting and holding out for a deal. But you stated some of his accolades this season, Chris, right? Second in, in, in sacks in regards to defensive tackles at 10 and a half. And he missed all of training camp plus week one. And b Mike, you know this. When you miss that much football, it's usually an acclimation period, right? But Chris Jones hit the ground running. And it's not just about what he does in the stat sheet, right? He makes everybody around him better. Let's not forget, George Karloff, his former first-round pick, had a career year this year. Ten and a half sacks rushing on the outside because he's able to get one-on-ones because Chris Jones is that dominant and you have to double-team him. Mike Dana, the other edge guy, career year for him, six and a half sacks. Again, getting those one-on-ones because Chris Jones gets that double-team. You saw it right there on the screen. No D-tackle has more pressures, sacks, or hits the last three years. I'm going to officially say it, B-Mac. He is the number one D-tackle in all of football. He has surpassed Aaron Donald. This was a long time coming, and we heard that this deal could be coming down the pike. Chris Jones, with those cryptic messages messages on Twitter, kind of let you know that something was coming down, and boy, did he cash in. $95 million guaranteed. Guarantees in the first three years of a five-year deal. Couldn't be more happy for Chris Jones. He talked about having a three-peat. Now he's locked into the Kansas City Chiefs for sure for the next three years, and they can go for that uh, three-peat. Yo, Leger, I echo everything you just stated. When you talk about Chris Jones on and off the football field, he does things the right way. And the thing that I like to highlight before I get into the football element, a year ago when he was going back and forth with the organization about trying to get a significant raise, a significant extension, including get an opportunity to get what he wanted when you talk about long-term deal, he still did things the right way. He wasn't a distraction. You talked about missing the first game. Yes, he missed the first game being involved with the guys, but remember, he actually supported them in the stands. So he did everything you would want to do, plus more, being a professional and then getting back on the grass with his guys and just balling out. Yes, you're right. He's the best defensive tackle in the National Football League. The numbers tells us that. His hot take tells us that as well. And based on his new deal, clearly the organization, the Kansas City Chiefs, they realize, like, yo, he's a top dog at his position. He's one of the best players in the National Football League out of any position, and they had to pay him the right way. And I'll say this right now, for Kansas City to have any aspirations of trying to get a three-peat, something we've never seen done in this Super Bowl era, it would not be a reality if you don't have number 95 in the lineup. So this was the first big break for Kansas City in trying to push all their marbles in the middle of the table to try to do something that we've never seen done before, which is three straight Super Bowls. It started today locking up Chris Jones. Now they can go ahead and devote their attention to other areas on their football team. But he was the biggest priority for them. Heck, he was the biggest offseason priority for all of us because he's that type of player. I mean, we saw it all postseason. As great as Patrick Mahomes is, guys, they're not winning that championship. They're not winning that Super Bowl without Chris Jones because he's made time and time again, he made plays down the stretch in those pivotal games, the Bills, the Ravens, and, of course, the 49ers. Now, Liget, BMAC touched on it, right, how about how this was such a big priority for KC. What else would you like Kansas City to do this offseason after the move they did or after the signing they got with Chris Jones? 
Well, let's talk about somebody that played the same position that B-Mac played, the Jarius Sneed. And honestly, B-Mac, going into this offseason, I thought that he would be a candidate to get franchise tag. And they did tag him, right? But I thought it for sure would be a tag and trade. Now, because of the 30 extra million dollars each team will be allotted to spend via the cap, there's a real scenario where they could keep Legereus Sneed on the one-year franchise tag. So it'll be interesting to see what Legereus Sneed does because he has been given permission to go out and seek a trade. And BMAC, you know this, right? Money talks. It's all about the Benjamins' baby. Now, if a team is willing to give him a lot of guaranteed money, I guarantee LeJerry Steed is going to leave depending on the compensation the Kansas City Chiefs get back in return. But if there's a scenario where he, at $19.8 million, LeJerry Sneed can stay on his team, you talked about locking in Chris Jones. That would be another pivotal piece in the Kansas City's regime to keep to try to get that three-piece. So that's the next big chip to fall. The number one chip, like you said, BMAC, was signing Chris Jones. You talked about it a little bit, Chris, of what he's done throughout the playoffs. In the Super Bowl, when the San Francisco 49ers had opportunities to make plays, it was Chris Jones that ruined that game. But also, hand in hand with that, Legereus Sneed was tasked to guard the number one receiver on the opponent's team, game in and game out. And BMAC, the crazy thing is, he didn't give up a touchdown into the playoffs. That is unheard of for a guy to shadow the number one receiver and only give up one touchdown and not do it in the regular season. He didn't do it until the playoffs. So Chris Jones was the, the, the biggest pivotal piece. Legereus Sneed is the next. It'll be interesting to see what type of market he has out there for teams vying for his services. Or does he end up coming back to the Kansas City Chiefs because they are allowed <laughs> that extra $30 million uh, to, to sign him with that franchise tag? Yeah, and that's the conundrum when you talk about Legereus Sneed and other teams because – they would have to give up, if I'm not mistaken, LeJay, Chris, a second-round draft pick. But outside of giving up a second-round draft pick, you have to lock him up. You have right. to give him an extension. So that right there could make this situation pretty good for Kansas City because they know, heck, if you go get Snead, who is deserving of seeing a huge payday? He is deserving of seeing that. No debate about that. But if you go get him, you give us a second round pick and you got to you gotta make sure you have the money to give him that extension. So for Kansas City, they're sitting in the catbird seat right now. They, oh, yeah. They're feeling so good. And when you factor in some of the young studs, if they happen to lose Snead, don't forget about Trick McDuffie. I mean, he was an all-pro. He was an all-pro, right? Yeah. To talk about a guy that can command and do business in the slot and, and the perimeter when it comes to the secondary play. You look at Watson as well. So they got a lot of young studs there just in case they happen to lose Snead. But I believe this could be a perfect off season when you factor in signing Chris Jones tonight like they did and finding a way to keep Snead in uniform for 2024. We thought we saw a dominating defense a year ago without their best player being with them in camp. Imagine what this defense can look like if they add a few pieces here and there via the free agency period and via the draft. Look out. I talked about a three-peat. I know there's a lot left to happen for them to be able to get to that level. But as I mentioned, the first step in moving forward to trying to accomplish a three-peat, it happened tonight in signing Chris Jones. Yeah, and we haven't even talked about the offensive side of the ball when it comes to wide receivers. Now, I want to know from you, Leger, when it comes to Snead, if they do indeed lose him this offseason, yeah. what does that do to their three-peat chances? Do you feel like, of course, it's not as significant as losing a guy like Chris Jones, but what does it do for their chances at a three-peat possibility? Well, B-Mac stated it perfectly. Like, the Chiefs are in the driver's seat because they did such a master masterful job two years ago drafting a whole bunch of young corners, and they got experience. People forget B-Mac. LeJarrius Steed was hurt two years ago, so guys like Josh Williams got extra reps. Guys like Jalen Watson got extra reps. Trip McDuffie was always the starting nickel, but now he's the starting corner on the outside, and he goes inside on third down when teams go three wide set. So they have the depth if they do lose LeJarrius Steed. Now, again, you don't just want to let a player that good walk out the building if there's good compensation and return for him, and also he gets paid what he's worth, then you're happy for him. But the Kansas City Chiefs, I would say are in a perfect position because it's almost like they were ready for this to happen if LeJarrius Sneed were to leave because yes. they drafted three corners in one year, B-Mac, and we talked about it, right? When LeJarrius Sneed got hurt, 
those young rookie players, they got a lot of reps, right? They went on to the Super Bowl. People forget Jalen Watson was the forgotten man, right? He had a really good rookie year having to step in mm -hmm. when Jerry Sneed was hurt. Josh Williams, a big physical corner, he played a lot of reps. So, Chris, if they lose a Jerry Sneed, even though he's a great player and should have been a pro bowler, I still like their chances because of the depth yes. and what they've done. The front office has done a massive job. Steve Spagnuolo has done a massive job getting his defense ready. But the most important piece was Chris Jones, right? LeJarrius Sneed is a heck of a player, but that defense goes as Chris Jones goes. And if LeJarrius Sneed leaves, they have great depth in that young secondary. Yeah, and, and, and you don't want to lose a player like LeJarrius Sneed because he is that guy. But if you happen to lose him, as LeJay just laid out for us, they prepare for this just in case. And if you look at Williams, if you look at Watson, these are guys that have the same measurables as Legereus Sneed. Two long, lengthy corners that play extremely well with their hands, disrupt up at the line of scrimmage. They have a they have a kind, they have a type when it comes yep. to playing the <laughs> yep. perimeter cornerback position for Kansas City and Steve Spagnola. And then don't forget about all the notable names, veteran names that are available in free yep. agency when it comes to secondary play. You don't necessarily have to address losing a guy like Legereus Sneed via the draft. Heck, you can go out and get one of these experienced veteran corners that's kind of towards the end of their career, but yet and still has some gas left in the tank that you can put into that lineup instantly, and they don't just provide the experience factor, but also a big play-making uh, ability as well. So this is a, man, listen, man, it, they just won the Super Bowl, guys. We were just in <laughs> Vegas watching the confetti fall. Yep. It feels like they're winning already, and the season hasn't even started yet. It's a dream for Kansas City Chiefs players and fans it's a nightmare for all of their competitors let's say doable brian mcfadden we appreciate the insight as always guys and chris jones letting it be known what just happened kc dot 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 five more years of greatness three times i don't know if he's alluding to trying to get that three peak for the three years guaranteed but hey chris jones is living large and he'll be staying in kansas city all right, coming up, it was another chapter of Duke-UNC, the greatest rivalry in sports, and man, did Cormac Ryan go off in front of the Cameron Crazies. Highlights and reaction after the break.